having women work more, participate more in, in the labor force ends up also creating a virtuous cycle for the financial markets. It's about 1% growth in an economy leads to about a 3.6% growth in a stock market valuation. And so we're going to project that now and look at what would be the market uptake in different markets by seeing this additional growth in the economy from women's participation and where are we going to see the stock markets grow. You can see here the United States market itself has a very large increase. The U.S. would increase an extra $3.7 trillion over the next decade. We have an opportunity to drive substantial economic growth. And because of how economic growth drives equity index growth, we see a multiplier effect on financial markets. The overall impact on the global economy is very significant. What the World Economic Forum has been able to do with this gender gap calculation is, first of all, it's used around the world by countries and by companies to really assess how's a country doing on gender parity. Countries actually have started to target different measures to try to improve on to move closer to gender parity. So it turns out that these numbers have become actionable numbers. In the Nordic countries, there's a significant support for childcare and early childhood education. Basically, you get quality care with government support while you work, and that means you don't have to go out of the labor force to take care of your child. You could see that countries could have between 2%, 6%, 8%, even 14% growth in their economy if you had that same level of participation in those economies as you do in Scandinavian countries. When you look at different economies and different cultures around the world, you can see that many of the barriers for women going into the workforce are cultural, they're historical, and sometimes they're economic. And this is really starting to open up as one of the most important questions around the world. Familial obligations actually are a key driver of lowering women's workforce participation. And a lot of people think this is because of childcare obligations, but actually caring for elderly family members is just as common. And as the old age dependency ratio increases, that places further downward pressure on women's participation in the workforce. As a population ages, you need more women to come into the workforce to supplement the people that are retiring. There is a really interesting shift going on around the globe of labor overall, and it's not just for women. It's a shift away from manufacturing and agriculture into high-level robotics, into data sciences, into the STEM fields. And we believe that women can also move into that field very easily through the right kind of education programs. The world has done a lot to bring down educational disparities and health disparities. The second biggest gaps are in economic opportunity and economic participation. The biggest gaps are in political representation. If we make more progress on women in political representation, that's a predictor for more progress on women in economic participation.